Hello and welcome back to Graph Woodshop. My name is Josh Graf, and today we have a project that I'm very excited about. I'm going to be making this rocking pizza cutter for my good friend Robert because his birthday's coming up. He's been baking tons of pizzas lately, so I thought he needed a pizza cutter. So anyways, I've got this kit here that I purchased from Amazon. It's made by Wood River, and we're going to try this thing out today. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will put a link down in the description below for the handle. What I've got here is this piece of walnut. So I got a lot of wood from my dad last time I went down to my parents. And this was one of the pieces. This piece of walnut was cut up in approximately the 60s. So this thing has been cut and air drying for twice as long as I've been alive approximately. Maybe a little bit more than that even. This piece does have a big crack down the middle. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is cutting it down the crack and then we're going to be shaping it into the handle for this. So, let's get after it. All right, so somehow I lost most of the footage of cutting this piece of walnut down, but what I ended up doing was just cutting it down the big crack in the middle, ripping that live edge off, and then cutting it to rough length at the miter saw. After that, I did take it to the joiner to flatten out one of the sides, and then also took it to the planer, just to get everything nice and neat and level. But yeah, sorry about losing most of the footage. Those things happen sometimes. Okay, so let's talk about what actually comes in this kit made by Wood River real quick. And that's pretty much nothing. So, you get the blade, which is what you're wanting. You also get these four rivets right here, which I am not going to be using. I'm actually going to just epoxy this blade into place because I'm not hacking down a tree with it. We're just cutting a piece of pizza and I'm sure the epoxy is going to be enough to hold it into place when you're cutting a piece of pizza. Okay. If you're wanting the look of these rivets, you can totally add them on, but I'm not going to worry about that. But that's all you get in this kit. You get the blade, you get four rivets, no instructions, nothing else. So, just keep that in mind if you are ordering this. Don't expect anything else, but honestly for the price, this nice little hunk of metal, these four rivets, not too terribly bad. I am very happy with it. I know it probably doesn't show up on camera, but man, that thing, like, that's a perfect fit. That is awesome. I gotta give those people over at Wood River credit for, like, making this thing the exact thickness they've done, because that, I don't know if you can really see that on camera right there. That's a good fit. Let's see. It slides out just a little bit if I shake it, but it almost stays in there just friction alone. Anyways, so. I'm happy with the depth I have that in there, and I do like, on the end there, being able to see that blade come out of there, I like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other end and basically cut it off where it would be flush with that. So I'm going to go over the miter saw, I'll do that, and then I'm also going to end up ripping down a little bit of this because that's too tall right there. I want to take some of that off, so... I'm going to play around with that, decide exactly what I want to do, and then go back over the table saw and rip this thing down where it's a little bit thinner, because that's pretty crazy right there. After that, we're going to start rounding over some edges, making this thing look nice and pretty. So, let's get after it. Got over to the table saw and decided just to take an eighth of an inch off. Okay, so... <coughs> What I've decided to do, after talking to myself for the last five to 10 minutes, I'm gonna hit with the sander, I'm gonna hit the chamfer bit over on the router, and then we'll see what happens. We'll see what goes from there. This thing's looking good. I'm really excited.
Alright. So I really like that. So I've sanded this to 180 right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of hand sanding on this chamfer. And then I'm going to hit everything else with 220. And I'm going to, on this edge, and this edge, just hit them with the sandpaper really good. I don't want to chamfer them. I've decided I'm just going to kind of round the mower a little bit just with hand sanding. I'm using this serious grit sandpaper that I picked up a while back. I've used it on a couple of projects now. I don't think I've used it on anything on camera though. So this is my first time talking about it. I really like this stuff. I had been using 3M Cubitron, which lasts forever. And this stuff seems to be lasting just as long for me. And it's about half the price. So might want to look into this, something to try out. Still testing it out a little bit longer, but I will be having a video come up out on this after I've used it on a couple more projects and I've decided if I like this or the Cubitron a little bit more. Hence, I'm totally leaning towards this because it's half the price. And there's no way the Cubitron is lasting twice as long as this. So, very happy with it. So I'm gonna get some sanding done and then I'll check back in with you guys. So I was trying to decide, do I put epoxy on this thing to attach it first? Or do I go ahead and finish this thing with some walrus oil first? What's my order of operations here? Anyways, I decided I'm so ready to see what this grain is going to look like that I'm just going to finish it now. So this thing's all sanded to 220. Oh man, let's do it. I'm using some walrus oil today. I'll put a link to this stuff down in the description below, but this stuff has to be shaken up before you use it. It's got coconut oil, beeswax, mineral oil, and vitamin E in it. So we're just gonna put some of that on there and look at the color of this thing pop. I don't know about you, but like this is the most satisfying part of any project, which is probably big part of why I decided to do it. Well, it's def which is definitely why I decided to do it right now. Woo! That stuff looks awesome. Okay, so now it's actually time to attach the actual pizza cutter itself to the handle that I've made for it. So to do this, I've just got some two-part epoxy. This is JB Weld brand, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of this stuff that they make that's pretty much all the same stuff. So, so squeeze it out here and mix it up. I have gone ahead and added just some painter's tape around the edge of the handle just because I don't want to have to clean the epoxy up after the fact since we've gone ahead and finished it already. But I'm gonna get this epoxy in here. Might need a little bit more than this, we'll see. I'm gonna get it down the crack. up now I've got this thing cleaned up taking the tape off did take most of the walrus oil off or quite a bit of it at least so I did have to apply that again if I was to do this again which I think I'm going to because I want one of these for myself I would do the epoxy first then do the walrus oil or whatever finishing that you're using after the fact so something to keep in mind something I learned going through this process epoxy first 
get that all cleaned up, then finish. I hope you like this, Robert. I'm sure you're watching this video, so you've got it by now. Happy birthday. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this and want to see other videos like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.